Hi, Jules. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining me and for being my inaugural guest. Hi, thank you for having me. We're excited to learn more about your Olympic experience, but first we want to start at the very beginning. Think back to that moment that you found out that you were the one that was going to be representing Honduras. What was that moment like for you? Very unreal, mainly because I had been dreaming of representing Honduras since I was little. Like I had been representing them since I was eight for my club team and then 11 internationally. And it's funny because my mom recently found a photo of me when I was little and I was like eight. And it's like, what's your future dream? And it literally says me, I want to be an Olympic swimmer. Um, and so it has been like a dream come true to be able to say that I am an Olympian and especially representing Honduras, which is just the country of my roots. Um, it's, it's always been, that's always been the goal. So it, I felt very accomplished. And I also called my parents because I was like, you guys have been just a part of as much a part of this as I have. So it was kind of a whole team effort right there. What did your parents say to you when you qualified? Uh, well, my mom cried. <laughs> my mom was definitely crying. Um, my dad was also emotional just because again, representing the country that they're from and that I identify the most with. Um, it was a dream come true for all of us because since I was little, like they've been the ones taking me to practice. They've been the ones when there are times I wanted to quit swimming. They're like, it's ultimately your decision, but we think that you actually do enjoy the sport. So why not keep trying? So they were also very proud and um, definitely ecstatic that, that it finally came to, to this moment. So when you did arrive in Tokyo to finally have your Olympic moment, uh, you mentioned to me that you were faced with an unexpected 10 day quarantine. Yeah. Why did you have to quarantine for 10 days? Um, so I got there the 13th and I actually got there early because of a sports camp. So it was like Pan Am sports. And it was so that countries that only had like one or two people representing them could kind of feel like they're part of the bigger team. So your Olympic committee could sign you up. And it was like a uh, many people actually from my club team was participating in the camp. So that was really awesome. And it was just a moment to get to know other people before entering the village so that was all fine. And then coming like two days before the end of the camp around the 17th, I had just finished a training session and they pulled me out of the water <laughs> and they were like, don't like panic a little bit, but we're going to have to separate, for, separate you from the group. Um, you're going to have to be quarantined because somebody on your flight has tested positive. And it wasn't anybody at the camp. It was just a random passenger on the flight, but they were like, due to Japanese government protocol and the rules and regulations of you guys participating in the Olympics, you're going to need to be quarantined. And originally they said for three days, um, but on the 19th, we then learned that it was actually supposed to be 14 days in total. So I'm actually very blessed that I got there the 13th instead of getting there closer to my event because 14 days, like the 14th day was the day that I raced. Um, so after the, the 27th, the day that I raced, then I was like free to, to kind of walk around the village and all of that, but it was definitely a little bit stressful, um, being extra quarantined those, uh, 10 days. What did you do during those 10 days? Um, so mainly stayed in my room. Um, the 19th, when a lot of people from my camp were moving to the village, they actually moved us to a different hotel. So they put us in a hotel with close contacts, like other people that had been deemed close contacts. Um, and it was four swimmers and two coaches of my situation that were, we all got put on the same floor. So whatever like your situation was, you kind of got put into that group at the hotel. So that was the 19th. And then they didn't let us swim then or the 20th. And then the 21st, they let us swim at night. Uh, but we had to wait for everybody to leave the pool for us to be let in. So we had like separate transportation and everything. And then the 21st, they didn't let us swim. The 22nd, my Olympic committee and the other Olympic committees had like fought with the, not fought, but they had had a discussion kind of being like, we'll quarantine them, but at least let them enter the Olympic village um, because they have been here and they've been testing negative the whole time. So why not at least let them be with their team? So then the 22nd, we moved to the village and I was really blessed because the 23rd was the opening ceremony. Um, and so then they let us walk the opening ceremony because they were like, you guys are good. Like, actually, it was a miscommunication. You guys are fine. 
Um, <laughs> and then the 24th, we got another email being like, just kidding. That was a miscommunication. You guys have to go back to your rooms and lock down. Um, so that was kind of all being muddled in my brain. But during those days, I kind of just, I was in my room a lot, obviously, like when I got to the village, I would just kind of sit on my balcony and look out and be like, Oh, I wonder what everybody's doing. Um, but my coach was like, just stay focused. Like, obviously don't overthink anything. Everything happens for a reason. Um, I talked to my parents a lot, talked to my friends, um, cause I was just trying to stay grounded and like relax. And well, on the days that I couldn't swim, I did dry land, uh, which was something that my club team here has kind of like enforced in us. They were like on days that you aren't able to swim, it's still really important to keep up the aerobic fitness. So that's what I did because obviously it'd be so difficult to go with like so many days without swimming and swimming 200 fly. So definitely a whirlwind of events and quite an enlightening experience, but at least I can say it was like something interesting. You also mentioned to me that um, you spoke with the BU coaches during this time. Who did you talk to? So I spoke with Jen, um, my coach Jen, and as well as Bill, uh, Coach Bill. With Jen, my favorite line that she actually said, my friend Alex made like a compilation of videos of my friends wishing me good luck. And Jen had this line at the end that was like, you've worked so hard to get to the Olympics, celebrate being there with this swim. I was like, she's so right. Like, what's the point of me coming here and getting all nervous and stressing out and then like not enjoying the experience? Um, Even when I was in quarantine, I was like, I'm so privileged to be in Japan. Even if I'm in my room, like I'm in Japan, I'm at the Olympics, I'm in the Olympic village. So I really need to make the most of this and enjoy every second that I'm here. Um, So that definitely helped me a lot. And then I spoke with Bill because Bill had actually, he had asked me what was going on. And then like I told him, um, and then he told me a story about a swimmer that he had been coaching who had taken a long break um, and then came back and still swam like lights out. And he was like, you know, if he can do it, like you can do it. And I was kind of like in my head, like, okay, Bill, like everybody always has a positive message, but I was like, you know what? It's so true. Like if he can do it, I can do it. Why not? So I was like, thank you so much because like that story really did help me. I was like, if this guy can take like two months off and then come back and drop time in the 200 fly. And it was like a perfect story too, because it was the 200 fly that the kid was swimming. So I was like, I knew this is why Bill was telling me. And then my friend Alex had made like a video of good luck with a lot of, of my closest friends. And um, that really helped me kind of before my event be, I think a little more appreciative of the experience, kind of take it and be like, I know I'm proud of myself for getting here. I know my parents are proud of me and obviously like my friends are proud of me and my country. So why not just put everything in the water instead of like being scared and timid and swimming kind of like nervous, why not just literally go for it and, and see what I can do. And, and it really, it did pay off. Yeah. That's a little bit of foreshadowing there. So going into that, going into that qualifying race, um, there, there were 17 swimmers entered 16 were going to make it to the semifinal round. So what thoughts did you have at that point about making it to the semifinal round? So a few of my friends are like joking and they're like, it's the semifinalist. And I was like, don't jinx it. Like, please do not jinx it. I need positive energy only. My coach was just like, honestly, Jules, like just swim it. This could be your last winter fly. And I was like, you're so right. (laughs) This really could be my last two flies. So let me just swim it like 450s. Like I've done so many at practice. What's one more? Um, but then when I got to the ready room, I kind of just was telling myself, Jomar, just don't disqualify yourself. Like (laughs) everything will go splendidly as long as you don't, don't get DQ'd. So I swear, like that was literally the only thing going in my head, Jules some four fifties and don't get disqualified. And also like do the best that you can, because that's really all you can do. At what point did you realize that Katinka Hosu was not going to show up and there were only going to be, there were originally going to be 17 athletes swimming, but then there were only going to be 16. So that was actually in like the third ready room. There's three that you have to go through. The first one, they like check your cap, goggles, your swimsuit, like all your gear. Um, And they kind of just sit you down and they're kind of just checking everybody in. Then the second one, there's more like your lanes are assigned. still like everyone's still kind of getting settled standing up and all that and then the third one is when people sit down 
because we're like, okay, we're about to do the walkout soon. And so when I got to the first one, I was like, is everybody here? Like, I just want to make sure everybody's here because this could be my last 200 fly. Um, and I saw, and I thought I saw like two people from Hungary. So I was like, okay, like Katinka's here. We're all good. Um, and then in the third one is when somebody was like, lane five isn't here. And I was like, and so I like got up and checked the heat sheet and I was like, oh, that's Katinka. And so that's when I was like, Jules, you really can't get disqualified. <laughs> it's like, you really got to finish. Like I, I, at that point I was like, I'm honestly not even thinking about the time. I was like, just finish four fifties and like, you're going to be all set. What was that swim like for you? Um, I, I literally, I just remember, <laughs> I remember the dive doing some dolphin kicks, popping up the four, the 15. Cause I was like, don't get disqualified. Um, finishing my first 50 and being like, you know what? I actually don't feel that bad. <laughs> and then I did my turn and then I like blacked out the next hundred. And then I remember the last 15 meters cause those hurt a little bit. And I was like, just finish like last five strokes. All you got to do is finish. Um, and then I touched the wall and I looked at the board and I like saw my time and I really didn't believe it. Cause the last time I think I dropped three seconds, I was like 14. And so I touch the wall and I look and I see like my friends were right next to it and they were like dancing and jumping. And I was like, oh my God, like that actually is my time. And then I like didn't stop smiling because I was kind of like, holy crap, I, I can't believe I just dropped time like at the Olympics. So much happened for you in this swim because by placing 16th, not only were you the first Honduras swimmer to make it past a preliminary round, but you also broke the national record by nearly two seconds. And like you just said, you PR'd by over three seconds. So for us non-swimmers, to help us understand, how significant is three seconds in the 200 meter fly? So for me, it's like, huge just because the last time I won a best time in the fly by that much was 2013. Like before I came to this team, my best time was from 2013 when I was 16 at worlds in Barcelona. And I really only did that time because I like went ham the first hundred and died the second. Cause that's the most memorable swim I've ever had. Cause I was against so many fast people and I got like the clap at the end. <laughs> it was, it was a very memorable swim, but, um, this time, like dropping three seconds was, I, again, like, as I said, I literally went in with no expectations. Um, and for that to happen, I was just kind of like, holy crap, all the training that I've done, like, has come to this, like the pinnacle of, of my sport, really. Uh, so it, it's a very big deal to just even drop 0.1. Like I'd been happy the whole season dropping like continuously 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.02 in my event. And for me to drop three seconds, like I was truly speechless. Um, I literally was just smiling at the end of my race because I really couldn't believe it. What was it like the next day when you got to come out and stand on the blocks in an Olympic semifinal? Yeah, so I could barely sleep. I, my coach was like, don't be on your phone a lot. He was like, obviously like your family's going to be texting you. Like uh, you can message them and all of that and be happy, like enjoy this experience. But another thing he had said kind of before us going to the Olympics was we're here to compete, not just to participate. Um, and so he was like, I love that you've done well, but you also obviously want to do well tomorrow. So don't like stay up all night texting everybody, like put your phone down, get a good night's sleep, get a good breakfast. And I'll see you at the pool tomorrow morning. So I was like, okay. Yes. Um, so I like put my phone down around like 10, 15 and I set my alarm and everything. And obviously it took a lot for me to fall asleep because I still had like an adrenaline rush. And then waking up, I was definitely a lot more nervous for the semifinal swim than I was for my first preliminary swim. Um, just because like being the first time during at a semifinal, like I knew there was a lot, well, so many more people watching and it being like more at a, convenient time for people to be watching the TV. So I was like, the people are definitely watching. I obviously want to do well. Um, doing the walkout, <laughs> I was like waving frantically because I was like, I don't know what to do with my hands. Um, but again, like as Jen had said, it was like celebrate the fact that you're here with this swim. So I really went in and I was like, again, Jules, like you did well yesterday. Like I know you can do it again. Um, 450s, like you got it. And I, I kind of was also like, 
you want to say that you swim the semifinal like and put everything out in the water you don't want to swim it like timidly so I went out a lot faster. Um, my last 15 hurt a little bit more <laughs> than the night before. But when I finished, I, I still had done better than the best time I had going into the Olympics. So I was definitely so proud of the event because um, I was like, okay, the dropping time like wasn't a fluke. Um, and obviously there's still like places to improve. So that probably wasn't my last 200 long course fly ever, but I was still super proud when I finished. Um, and yeah, again, like really nothing was going through my head. It that it was just finish and like make your country proud and and like you're here. So why not swim the best that you can and put everything out in the water? How has the Honduras responded to your performance at the Olympics? Um, definitely very happy. <laughs> um, I got so much support, like unbelievable amount of support and messages and people just being like we're watching like swimming wasn't originally like a sport that we would watch at the olympics but like now we're definitely watching like knowing our flag is there in a semi-final um when i got to honduras i had like people asking me how it was i went back to my club team and like i had little kids kind of like asking me how it was and stuff and and just being able to inspire people i think has been like a great kind of gift that I've gotten from being able to go to the Olympics um and like talking about the quarantine and being like you know what not everything is going to happen how you want it to like even at this big stage like something still happened to me and, and it's possible to push through and like still have positive results like it really is all about your mindset and trusting the process so I'm hoping like I just want to inspire people and and kind of show them that hard work does pay off because again like eight years it's been since I've really dropped time and done that well in an event so um, anything is possible like with a positive mindset and hard work and and I think like that's what I've been kind of gifted with like little kids looking up to me and I was able to go to a foundation in Honduras as well and talk to these kids about like the importance of not only sports in your life but also school and so I like talked about BU and I was like without swimming like I wouldn't have had a scholarship and and BU has done so much for my life like not only with my undergrad but also the friends that I've made and and the relationships I still have with my coaches so um it's been great. Like everything that's kind of blossomed from this, uh, not only like sports related, but also for future generations, I think of Honduran swimmers or athletes. And you mentioned a couple of times that it could have been your last 200 fly ever, but you're back in Florida training. So what are you training for? I know. <laughs> um, I took a vacation and it's been hard getting kind of back into it. Uh, just because swimming is a sport, like with a lot of days off, it's, it, it keeps you humbled. I will say that. Um, but sorry, if you can hear like screaming, <laughs> I mean, I live with the host family on while I'm here, but, um, yeah, so I'm here in Florida cause I'm training to qualify for short course worlds in December. Um, it's in Abu Dhabi. And so I've never been to a short course world. So I was going to start a master's in September, but after talking to my coaches and I actually made this decision before going to Tokyo, um, it was something I thought long and hard about. And I was like talking to my parents as well and my coaches and being like, do I want to keep swimming or like, do I want to call it quits after the Olympics and putting a lot of thought into it. I was kind of like, I've actually never been to a short course worlds of all the meets. The only two meets I had not been to yet was like the Olympics and short course worlds. Cause at BU, I always had final exams during this uh, competition. So now I was like, you know what, I'm gonna defer my master's program and I'm gonna keep going because why not check off this, this meet from uh, my bucket list. Well, Jules, thank you so much for joining me. Now you can add first two weeks in Terrier Town guest to your list of accolades. <laughs> um, I'm so happy to, to have had you and to have learned more about your time in Tokyo. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me.